All right, so welcome to the Git Garrett tutorial. Um, we're going to do basically step by step instructions um, of how to get started using Git and uh, how to use Garrett. Um, first thing we're going to do is set up Git on the machine, you know, configure Git to work with our Garrett repo, um, and then install the Git review tool that we use to push our, push our patch sets into Garrett. And then we'll walk through changing some code, submitting a patch, and what the basic media wiki code review process is. So does everyone have the Git tutorial open? Does anyone not have it open? Can you see the web address on the screen? Yeah, and it's also linked to off the main hackathon page if you guys want to look there. So does it, did everyone get set up with a labs account? Did everyone actually log into Garrett? Does anyone, is anyone that can't log into Garrett? Can everyone raise their hands now just so I can make sure you're listening? Oh, uh, see, he's not listening. Darn. All right. Um, does everyone actually have Git installed? Or does anyone not have Git installed? You do not have it installed? So I asked both questions, just trying to confuse you. <laughs> All right. So what is Git? Git's a distributed version control system, or DV, yeah, DVCS. It's written in C, and it was originally developed by uh, Linus Torvald, the creator of the Linux kernel. And he did it to manage the, he created it to manage the source code for the Linux kernel and make it easier to accept patch sets from, you know, a great number of people. So in the past couple of years, it's really taken off as a very robust and well-supported uh, code repository. Hold on, I'm going to try to move this. This is awkward. All right, sorry about that. So one of the really cool things about Git is it's distributed. So there's no central copy of the repository like with Subversion. I guess I should move this around. Um, so Subversion, Wikimedia's servers host to the repository, and the users would commit their changes to that one central uh, repo, where in contrast, Git, uh, once you've cloned the repo, you have a fully functioning copy of the source code with all the branches and tags released, like all there locally. You can make all of your changes. You can push them remotely. You can just not push them remotely, hang on to them. You can share them with other people. Um, and you just have a full copy of the repo, you know, there on your machine. And the nice thing about Git also is it's, it's free and open source. Um, you know, it can handle everything from a small to a very large project. And it's really fast and, and efficient. And it's pretty easy to learn with a very small footprint uh, and lightning fast performance. So, like, the people that were creating the Linux kernel like performance, and so that you see that in this tool as well. And it really outclasses other tools, other source uh, code management tools like Subversion, CVS, Preforce, ClearCase. Um, one of the nicest things, like the cheap local branching, it's really easy to make a, a feature branch work on, on your code, merge that you know, back into your master. And it has a convenient staging area and multiple, supports m multiple workflows. So uh, next we'll talk about Garrett. So, you know, Garrett's a free web-based collaborative code review tool that integrates well with Git. It was originally developed um, at Google by Sean Pierce, and he's the co-author of, um, of Git and a founder of JGit. Uh, and it was originally developed for the devel development of the Android project. And it still sees pretty active development today. Um, it started from just a set of patches to I don't know how to pronounce it right, but Redville. It became a fork that involved in a full-blown project because they wouldn't accept the patches that they were making back into that project. So it ended up being rewritten. Uh, <laughs> it ended up being rewritten in Java instead of the original Python that it was before. So uh, next, we'll talk about why did uh, why Wikimedia moved from Subversion to Git. 
if any of you have been longtime Media Wiki people, you know we used to use the version. The, the Git conversion only happened fairly recently. So there's really three major reasons uh, that we moved. First was to con encourage participation, since Git is a distributed, Git is distributed, allows people to contribute with a less, much lower barrier to entry. So anyone will be able to clone the re repository and make their own changes and keep track of them. And if you get an account you know, in Garrett, which all of you should have now, uh, you'll be able to push your changes you know, out wider uh, for the rest of the community to review. Uh, another reason that we did it was to fix our technical process. So Subversion so te has technical flaws that, <coughs> excuse me, that make it uh, life difficult for developers. Notably, the implementation of branching is not really easy to use at all. It makes it hard to use feature branches. And since their community is uh, very distributed with many parallel efforts and needs to integrate many different feature, feature efforts, we like to use the feature branching more. Uh, and it's nice to have that isolation model. People can work in parallel. You don't have to worry about you know, colliding with other people's changes. And then the Git branches are really easy to work with and merge between you know, other branches, back to master, things like that. And it makes things easier for our development community. And other large projects are using, uh, using Git efficiently, like Drupal, Postgres, and they have the same kind of switch from subversion to Git that we've done. So we were able to kind of look at what they've done, you know, and learn from their experiences and not make the, the same mistakes. And then, sorry. Then the last reason, you know, not necessarily the final reason, is to get, in, to get improvements to users faster. So with the better branching and more granular code review workflow, um, it will suit our needs a lot better, plus ongoing improvements to our automated testing infrastructure. We won't have to wait months before deploying already written features and bug fixes uh, you know, out to the sites. Like right now, I think we've already seen, I think Rabla can speak to this. If, where is he? Oh, way back there. I mean, since we switched to Git and Garrett, things have been going out a little quicker than they were in the past, correct? Can everyone hear him okay? No. Okay. Can anyone hear him? So does anyone, everyone know who this guy is? Yeah, so um, uh, prior to deploying uh, Git and uh, uh, Garrett, we were, it, it took us m months, uh, um, often, uh, like 12 months, but you know, we try to try to deploy like every six months or so, and with uh, uh, the new workflow that we have, we're able to deploy every couple weeks, and we might even go faster. Thanks. Yeah, and that's only going to get faster. Like we'll only be able to get you know code out quicker and quicker over time. And one of the nice things, like with the the core of MediaWiki software being in Git, we can have continuous integration tied in with Garrett and our code review process. So when you make a commit that's gonna affect files in core, you can see that the Jenkins tool has run, it's in lint checking on the PHP, it makes sure that the build builds and passes all that build criteria. So you can get pretty instantaneous feedback of, hey, are my changes sane? You know, did I break something? Can I move forward? That sort of thing. So a couple of quotes from the community regarding this. Um, so one of the quotes, I just, Love Git just because it allows me to commit locally and offline. I mean, the offline aspect is is really nice. You know, before in the subversion world, since you had a central repo, the only way that you could, you know, commit anything to that repo was to be online, have access to our servers, you know, all of that good stuff. So, another quote from Roan is: "You can create commits locally and push them to the server later. You know, great for working without Wi-Fi, which I kind of find hard to believe that Roan would ever not have Wi-Fi." Uh, you can tell it to save my work so I can do something else now in one command and allows us to review changes before they go into trunk, you know, or master and they get paradigm. Without human intervention, intervention uh, in merging things into trunk, and since Garrett automates this process. Right. So does everyone have their Garrett account set up and like SSH keys created and uploaded to Garrett or does anyone? Okay, so can anyone not log into Garrett? 
Good. Uh, does anyone not have SSH keys? Sweet. Okay, so Windows guy will be helped. Okay, so did everyone? Did anyone not upload your public SSH, uh, public SSH key to Garrett? So everyone's got their SSH, SSH key uploaded to Garrett. Everyone, sweet. You guys just give me so much feedback, you know. Man in blue pants, yes. What? <laughs> I couldn't. Marcin, can you help that guy? Yeah. All right. Uh, this guy in the big yellow shirt. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. So, does everyone have Git installed and configured? I doubt it so thoroughly. Pardon? I said I doubt it so thoroughly. Okay. Okay, I'm going to do a little raise the hand thing so that helps me. Um, who has Git set up and configured? Okay. I, I mean, configured as far as like you can use it. It's installed and working. All right. So I'm going to kind of breeze past the setting up Git portion since uh, most people have that set up. If you look in the tutorial page, there's links for <coughs> Mac, Mac OS X, Windows, and, and all the different kind of Linux and or popular Linux and Unix platforms. So you can see how to get that installed if you don't have it installed. But I don't think we have to go, you know, over that directly. Which packages? So the Git core package is just basically the, the core of Git. doesn't have all the extra um, bits. There's some GUI things that they include. And the other, I think the other package is like a meta package that has like the Git GUI and some other things as well. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to move on to the configuring Git portion. So, <clears throat> thank you. So if you open up a terminal and type git config dash L, you should see something similar to the screenshot that's on, that's on the screen. <clears throat> and so you can see in the screenshot, it tells you, um, you know, what the, just ba basic config settings that you have set, you know, right now for Git. And when you look through that list, you want to make sure that it has your username and email configured. So if you don't, in <clears throat> the output of that command, if you don't see your username and password, you'll need to use the Git config tool to, to set those. So in order to set the, your username and password, um, you're going to use the, like what you see on the, the screen now, the git config dash dash global user.email and put the email address that you used for Garrett access. And then you'll want to set your username. So git config dash dash global user.name and the username. So git tracks who makes each commit by checking the username <coughs> and email in addition. Uh, we use this information to, to associate your commits with your Garrett account. And once you have those set, you don't have to worry about it. They'll, they'll stay. So you can see in this next screenshot, you know, once I've run the git config and set my Wikimedia email address and my username now, when I do another git config L, I, I now have the user.email and user.name set correctly. So does everyone have that? That part done? Not yet? All right. 
So once you have that, that set up, uh, we're going to move on to downloading the MediaWiki example extension using Git. So you can currently download the MediaWiki core using Git as well as many of the extensions that are installed in the, on the uh, foundation server cluster. And by uh, July 2013, all the extensions that were in Subversion will either be available using Git or move to some alternate you know, version control hosts. So <clears throat> the first command that we're going to use with Git uh, is git clone. So in order to collaborate with us, you'll want to get a copy of the MediaWiki repository so you can look at and use the code. Um, in order to do that, you're going to clone it. So the command that you're going to want to run is git clone, like what you can see in the, on the screen. And you want to go git clone https uh, garrett.wikimedia.org forward slash r forward slash p forward slash test forward slash MediaWiki forward slash extensions, forward slash examples dot git. And what this is going to do is clone the, the MediaWiki example extension using git. So if you look in the, the screenshot there, you'll see you know, the basic output that you should see. So we'll say it's some, you know, like initialize an empty git repo. Um, and you want to put that in a directory where you're going to want, you know, where you typically would do your development. So in this example, I just made a, an MW directory off of the root to check that examples repo out. So depending on the speed, you know, you're pulling these files down from our remote Garrett repo, so it should take maybe just a minute. Does anyone have any questions? Or, okay. Is everyone able to actually clone that, that repo? You had a question? Uh, is it? I think it's in the chat. Okay. Hey, do you want to help him? Okay. So when you run this command, it's going to copy the entire history of that repo, and so you'll have that locally, um, and it will give you a working directory, you know, of that code so that you can look at the code, start editing it, make changes, um, you know, do whatever. And in order to see that that is a, a git checkout, you'll see a dot git subdirectory. And that's where all the project metadata is going to live. And so by default, Git will create a directory that's the same name as that repo in the URL. Uh, if you wanted to have a different name, so for example, we had that git clone line where it's examples.git. If you wanted to name it you know, foo, you would just put space foo afterwards, and it would create a foo directory. But by default, it's going to use whatever the, you know, the repo name is, so the portion just before the dot git you know, at the end. So if you look at the the directory that you just cloned into, you should now see an examples you know, directory, kind of like the screenshot, which I guess blue was a horrible color to have for the directory on that screen well, with a contrast. A little hard to see. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So I'm going to assume that you all have that. So the next thing you're going to do is we're going to prepare to work with Garrett. All right, so in order to properly work with Garrett, uh, you need to have a pre-commit hook that adds the change ID to your commit summary. And that change ID, that unique ID, will let Garrett track your commit. Since git commit identification is based on SHA-1 of the commit ID, whenever you amend a commit, uh, the SHA-1 will change, and Garrett would have lost track of it. So they add this extra change ID so that they can track the patch sets and make sense of everything that you're committing. So. What you're going to want to do is install Git Review. Um, if you look, if you guys have the uh, Python pip, the package installer installed, you can do this really easily. 
Um, how many people are on Linux? Or a lot of people? OK. If you don't already have the Python pip installed, you can use, like if you're on Ubuntu, you can use uh, app git install python dash pip. So, some, yeah, some do have Git review already. So you can also look in your package management tool, package management, management tool and see if you have a Git review meta package. All right. So is everyone able to get Git review installed? So you should see something similar to the screenshot you know, when you're installing that in most Linux-based systems. And something similar to the screenshot once, once it's actually installed. So the next thing we're going to want to do is actually set up Git review. So after cloning the repository, you'll need to set up, you know, set it up using Git review. And this will automatically happen the first time you try to submit a commit, but it's generally better to do it right after cloning so that you have you know, everything configured. So it, once you have git review installed, you just will do a git review uh, dash s, and that, that should set things up. So you see something similar you know, to the screenshot here. Um, so it's basically gonna, uh, you're going to want to make sure that the identity of the, the Garrett host is correct. So you should see something you know, asking you for the authenticity of host uh, can't be established and make sure that you want to explicitly accept that. So you should be able to just type yes for that. And then it should create a git remote called Garrett that maps to uh, using SSH. So it would be SSH, your Garrett username, you know, at garrett.wikimedia. And Garrett's running on port uh, 29418. So you, you should see that, you know, as well. One of the nice things about I, well, one of the things about Garrett is that you can SS, you can use different commands directly over SSH of it. So you know, taking note of that port number is important. Like in the future, if you wanted to do, you know, mass approvals or mass rejections on things, there's ways to do that from the command line without having to use the web UI, which can be pretty handy. But it's kind of outside of the scope of what we'll talk about here. So. Once you get um, that configured, the basic things that it's going to be doing is you know, make sure that you have access to the remote re repository. Uh, if it doesn't, it's going to ask you for your username and try again. And it's going to create that remote called Garrett that points to Garrett. And then it's going to install that uh, commit message hook. The commit message hook is you know, what's going to track those change IDs for you. So next, we're going to move on to how to actually submit a patch. And keep in mind, if you guys have any questions, he's running around there. He can help you get things configured. So if you have any questions, just queue them up with him. So you know, we're going to cover how to submit a patch. So the main avenue of submitting changes to MediaWiki is to first you know, join the MediaWiki development community, which all of you have done by getting Garrett access. And this allows you to submit your changes to us you know, using Garrett which is our code review tool. So you know, getting developer access is relatively easy, as most of you have seen. You, know, you got set up today with your Garrett accounts. So the first thing you want to do before you really start hacking on things are update your master copy. Um, so if you go in, you change into that examples directory that you, you cloned earlier, and you want to make sure that the master branch, you know, the branch you created when you initially cloned the repository is up to date. And you use that uh, by using the git pull command. So you can see in the example, you want to do git pull origin master. And you'll see in the output, like similar to the screenshot, that's already up to date, because I doubt anyone's made any changes in the time since you cloned it. But if, they, if people had made changes, it would pull all those changes down you know, locally into your working copy. So, one of the nice things that we talked about earlier about Git is that it supports really easy branching, you know, unlike 
how difficult it was back in the subversion days. So when you're going to make a change, we want to start off with actually creating a branch. And you want to create a local branch to do that. So in order to create the branch, um, <clears throat> you're going to use the git checkout dash b and the branch name that you choose and then master. So we want the branch names typically to be pretty short, but still a reasonably descriptive name. So you can see in this example, since I'm working on this mythical bug called bug12345, I'm just going to make my branch name 2012 forward slash bug12345. So the example command that you would you all want to do is you know, git checkout dash b, you know, 2012 forward slash bug12345 space master. And <clears throat> once you run that command, you're going to see switch to a new branch. It's going to have that branch name. And then if I run the git branch, yeah, yeah. If I run git branch, you know, I'll see that I've switched to that branch and I'm no longer on master. So I'll give you guys a second to, to get that done since he's still right around helping some people. While he's doing that, does anyone else have any questions? No? So when you run uh, that command, it's basically doing two things at once. So, well, the problem is like you don't, you have Windows with Python, but we don't have Git review and you don't have pip installed. So, what do you do? Can you scroll up to the command, or do we have something? Do we have so pip I, package? I don't have anything in the tutorial for the, the link to the Windows package, but there should be a git review Windows package that can be installed, and I think Sumana can get the link. Okay, to we'll that get, we'll get the link for Windows people right now, okay? All right, so when we did the command earlier uh, with the git checkout dash b and the branch name and master, what, what that basically is equivalent to is doing git branch, that branch name master, and then git checkout that branch name, and um, it just does that all in one step. So once we have that branch created, we're going to actually want to work on some code. So whatever code editor you use, you're going to want to open up the example example.body.php file, so you can see. You know, on the screenshot here, I'm opening this file in, in Vim. So does everyone have that file opened in a code editor? All right, so I'm assuming you all have that file open. And you should see a difference between what you see in the, the screenshot here and the file that you've actually checked out. The file that you've checked out, you, you no longer have, I mean, you don't have a, a git version method. Um, but in the screenshot, you, there is now a git version. Uh, so if you want to just copy what you see there you know, into the local file, so under the execute method, you're going to make a new method called git version and return some value. In this example, I did 0 0.01, but you could you know, make it return whatever you want. Basically, what we're wanting to do is just make an, you know, some sort of change to a file and then show what that uh, committing a patch process is like.
Okay. I've added a link to the Windows Git review package to the Windows section on this tutorial page. So if you reload the tutorial wiki page, you'll see a link to the Git review package for Windows. Okay, so was everyone able to open up this file and make the changes that you see in the screenshot? We're all good? Huh? Yeah, I mean, otherwise we can, you could all make arbitrary edits, so. So once you make the, the changes to the file like you see on, on the screenshot there by adding that new method, you're going to want to save that file and then uh, return back to the command line and use the git diff command. And that's going to let you see the changes that you've made you know, to the files and directories. So the output of git diff is going to be similar to what you see in the screenshot there. So it should tell you a diff between you know, A and B, so the two versions of the file, the you know, original before modifications and the after. Um, with modifications, and you should see, you know, just a unified diff format, like plus, 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 and that new uh, git version method that you added. So, without any extra arguments, a simple git diff will just display that unified diff format, you know, basically a patch, um, and it will show you the content that you've changed in the project since the last commit that are not yet staged for the next commit snapshot. So, <clears throat> in order to check the changes you've made, uh, you can use git status. And that's going to show you something similar to the screenshot that you see here. So, when I run git status in this example, it's going to say hey, you've modified examples, example.body.php. Uh, one of the critical things that you'll notice, you know, I really picked horrible colors for these screenshots. You can't see that red <laughs> there at all. Is that um, no changes have actually been added to that commit snapshot. So there's, you know, I'm not actually going to be doing anything. So it's telling you you should use git add or a git commit dash a to actually add those files to your the staging index. So when you you know, you run git status, you're going to see if anything's been modified and are staged since the last commit. So you can decide if you want to actually commit a new snapshot and what will be recorded in it. And it's going to show you all the modified files. And then to prepare submitting a file, you should, you know, add your changes to the index, you know, that staging area between the working copy um, and your local repository. And in order to do that, you're going to use the git add command. So. What you're going to want to do is run git add you know, example forward slash example dot body dot php. So you can see in the screenshot that um, when I use git add, now it says that file's been modified, but I have the syntax highlighting on, so it's, it's green now, saying that that actually is the change that's going to be committed. And if I wanted to unstage those changes for some reason, if I didn't want to commit that file anymore, I could use git, the git reset command and reset to head and pull that file back out of the staging index so it wouldn't be committed to my local repository. So <clears throat> we've already run git add on that file and that, in that put the files that we wanted uh, to include in our next commit snapshot. And then anything we changed after that's you know, not going to be committed. And we'd have to actually do git add again to add that to that commit snapshot. And this allows you to kind of craft your snapshots with a bit more precision. So since we're working now in a feature branch, you know, we can sit, we're kind of isolated from things. Because in this example, we're trying to fix you know, this mythical bug, one, two, three, four, five. So we kind of can craft that however you want so that it's the same, same commits. Um, so if we want to, while we're doing this and we want to see the changes that we've already, you know, added to the staging area, we can use um, git status to see everything. But if we want to see a diff of what's done, we're going to use the git diff command again 
but this time with the dash dash cached. So it's going to show us the, a diff of what's in the staging area. So the output's still going to be the unified you know, diff format, look very similar to what we had before. But the only difference is there's, this is actually what we've staged to commit versus before it's the changes that have not been staged for commit. So <clears throat> now that we're actually happy with what we're going to commit, we're going to want to actually commit those changes to the, the local repo, repo. And we do that using the git commit. So whatever editor you have as the default on your system should open once you run git commit. So I'm assuming everyone has this file staged and ready to commit. So go ahead and run git commit. One of the important things when you're doing a commit is that you want to have kind of a sane commit message. So in this example, we want to be pretty explicit of what we actually changed. And something to keep in mind is these commit messages are going to make it through as like an IRC notification for people that are in the MediaWiki channel on Freenode and also you know, be emailed out. So you want to kind of have the, the first line be very succinct. So in this example, you know, we're getting a we're adding a new method to this extension. So you want to keep it kind of short for the first line, but then on the subsequent lines, you can make it more verbose and actually maybe link to the bug that you've, you know, that you're going to fix, like in this example, this bug one, two, three, four, five, and any other information that you think would be important for people to see and help aid in the code review process. So as you can see in the screenshot, you know, just added git version method to extension. Just super simple. So once you've made that, you're going to want to save, uh, you know, that commit message. So whatever your default editor is, in this case, you know, vim, you're just going to save the file. So once you've done that, you'll see the name of the branch and then the small first section of the SHA-1 and it should say the commit message again and tell you that one file's changed, you did seven insertions and zero deletions. So you can see that that makes sense based on the changes that you made. If you looked at the, the diff earlier, you saw there's you know, seven new lines that were created. You didn't remove any lines and you changed just that one file. So for some reason, you, know, you thought you were making a small change, but after you did git commit, you saw some huge number of insertions or deletions or files that were changed, you may have done something wrong <laughs> and you might want to go ahead and you know, revert that back. So <clears throat> while working in your branch, you can just, you know, like shampoo, just repeat this step over and over again and <laughs> until you get the set of changes that you, you want to have pushed to that master branch. So one of the cool things about git is that when you use git commit, you're committing only to your local copy. This means that you can commit as often uh, as you like without potentially screwing things up for another developer in the project. Uh, so like in Subversion, you know, you had to be really careful of what you committed because you could break things for not just yourself, but for everyone. And you know, in distributed projects, people aren't that happy when you do that. So you know, the workflow is basically you know, you're adding the changes with git add, you're verifying the list of files, your staging area with git status, you're gonna re review the diff of changes that have been staged, uh, git diff dash dash cached, and then you're gonna repeat until you're happy with the changes, just committing all along the way. So, one of the more advanced topics, let's say you've committed, you know, 10 things, but you don't think it's really sane to, to have 10 separate commits going off for review, so you want to squash them all together, and Git allows this facility you know, for you. And that's covered in the workflow document that's linked to from here, so you can see more advanced you know, topics like that. So if you wanted to do you know, 20 different commits that you did for some reason separate and push them into one commit, you, you have that ability before you push from your local repo to that remote, which is kind of nice. So the next thing we're going to do is actually prepare to push the local changes that you have uh, into Garrett, which actually this should be fun because everyone has made basically the same edit, so like the merge nightmare. But that's why we let Garrett do it. Yay! 
So before your changes can be merged into master, you, they're going to have to under, undergo review in our Garrett code review tool. So first, it's a good idea to synchronize your change set of changes that have been made in master since you've been working. So from within the branch you've been working on, you're going to want to execute the following command. You'd, we're going to do the git pull origin master again, and then after that's completed, a git rebase master. And basically what this is doing is just synchronizing you know, your local branch with whatever has been changed remotely so that you don't have unnecessary merge conflicts. So, so git pull will update the code in your local copy of the master branch. And then the git rebase will temporarily set aside the changes that you've made to your branch, apply all of the changes that have happened in the master to your working branch, and then merge all of those changes you've made back into the branch. Yeah. OK, I see a question in IRC. I did git dash review dash s, and the error message is dot git review file found in this repository. Um, so that's Rajesh. Rajesh, wave your hand. OK, Marcin will go help him. Does anyone else have that error? OK, so Marcin will help those two people. Sorry. All right, so we've covered what git rebase does. And once you're satisfied with the change, So once you're satisfied with the changes that you made and you rebase against master, now you're actually ready to, to push your code for, to Garrett you know, for actual review, which is scary and harsh. No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> so in order to push your changes to Garrett, you're going to use the git review tool that you installed. So we do this using git review. Uh, and then dash r. And so you'll see that it's connecting the remote. It's going to resolve the deltas. It's, and then it's going to tell you the new changes and link to the, the change set in the Garrett web UI so you can see the changes that you made. So uh, you know, upon success, you're going to see that confirmation with the link to the change set in Garrett. And then also, like I mentioned, in, we have a hook that runs in IRC and the MediaWiki channel on Freenode where it will actually link to that as well. So if you're on IRC, you're doing active development, you can see all the new changes that people are making, which is nice. And it'll allow you to click and, and get the, directly to that change in the Garrett Web UI. So the Garrett Web UI looks something like this lovely screenshot here. Um, so one of the things that we did with the git review is the dash r at the end. And the reason we did that was to avoid the, the unnecessary rebasing. And in this example, we are you know, fixing this mythical bug 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if, you're, if your commits are addressing a bug in Bugzilla, you want to comment on that bug and note that the commit in the, you know, that the commit's been made, that the change is pending, and then link back to that change set and Garrett so that people can, can, you, can go and review your change. There's a question. May we commit? Yes, please, during this exercise. Yes, please commit. Please do the git review and, and push to Garrett. That is the point of this exercise, to make sure you can do it. All right, so I'll give you guys a, a minute to actually get caught up if anyone's having problems. And in the meantime, I'll drink some water.
OK. So you can see on the screen here, I've got the, the Garrett Web UI open. And that's just open to the link that we had uh, once we actually pushed our change, change pass, patch set to Garrett. So a couple things to note. Um, you can see that the topic that is set is that branch name, that local branch name that we have. And that's just the local branch. It's not a remote branch. So it's not someone shared. It's not shared between multiple developers. It's just your local branch. But you can see it's nice. It's like logically snapshots your changes into that branch. Um, and Garrett will actually delete those branches uh, once you actually do merges. So you don't have to keep track of them and, and go and manually delete those yourself. Um, and then the other thing to note is the project. That, that's the repo that we're actually checking things into. Um, and an interesting link that's kind of hidden and you don't really notice is this GitWeb, GitWeb link, which is actually going to give you a link to the tree, and you'll see the, the files that you're changing in that repo. So you'll want to like keep track of those um, if you want to browse the repo easily through a web UI. And then you'll see the various you know, buttons that you have access to, and those change depending on what level of access to Garrett you, that you have. Uh, but the kind of button that should be read there <laughs> is the abandon change. So if you've done something just completely ridiculous, you don't. There's no need for it to be reviewed. You can just push the big panic, you know, abandon change button. But all is not lost once you push that button. Uh, if you want to bring back an abandon change, you can resurrect it. So nothing's really final. So in the typical code review process, you know, you're going to push push this patch set. So you can see that patch set one has been pushed under this change. And you're going to hope everything's well. Everyone's like, oh, this is the best code I've ever seen. Give you just like a bunch of praise and, and merge it into master, and like all, everything's done. But that doesn't happen, because we have people like Roan that work for us that notice things that you don't notice. Um, and they give you constructive, nice feedback of like, hey, don't use this, or you're using too many globals, or this is spelled incorrectly unless you're in Britain, um, you know, things like that. And they'll do that two different ways. They either can leave a comment on the change that will appear at the bottom of the screen, or they're going to do inline comments on the, the diff of the code and show you exactly what lines, you know, have issues or things that you should address. So in this case, you're going to actually want to amend this change and push a new patch set. So in this example, we just have the first patch set, patch set one, and these are just going to increment, you know, up, and you could end up with a change that has 20 patch sets because it took that many iterations to get things perfect and for, to make everyone in the community comfortable with merging that code, you know, into the central repo. So the next step that we're going to cover is actually amending a change to address any concerns. I'm pausing and asking for questions. Does anyone have any questions? OK, so do you have to ask a review, or will someone see the change? It's a great question. So as I talked about earlier, when you push a new patch set, it's going to send out a notification on IRC, and you know, Let's say 100 people are on IRC in that channel. They're all going to see that change. And you know, since we're just all curious people, a lot of people will click on it and want to look at it. But if you explicitly want to ask for review, as you notice on the web UI here, um, where it says need code review, you can do add reviewer. So you can either put the name, uh, email, or group of the people that you want uh, to review the code. And when you do that, so it's in this example, if I wanted Arthur Richards, one of our other senior mobile developers, to look at a change I've done, I would put his email address, click the Add Reviewer, and Garrett's going to ping him. It's going to send him an email and say, hey, Arthur, Patrick wants you to look at a change, because he thinks it's awesome, and you're going to love it, and you're just going to merge it. OK. OK, so the, the next thing we're going to cover is amending a change. So like we said earlier, we made this first, first patch set. We've gotten some constructive you know, criticism on it. And now we're going to go ahead and amend that change. So you know, you're going to want to amend submitted changes, even if someone doesn't give you necessarily you know, bad feedback or, or you know, think, 
address issues that should be changed. And you're going to amend your own changes, or you could amend someone else's changes. So someone, you know, you're doing code review, you see something, did, someone did something super simple, you could pull down their change, make, uh, make a change to it, and then push that back out. So in order to actually amend the change, we're going to use the get review tool. So you can see the command there, we do git review, dash D, and then the change number. So in the example that we just had, that change number was 9332, but for all of you, it's going to be different. So you just do git review, dash D, and whatever that change number is. And if you have a hard time finding that, it's whatever the link was that you had, that last portion. Um, that's the number that you're looking for. So when we, after we run Git Review, you'll see output similar to the, the screenshot there, where it's going to say downloading you know, refs, changes, blah, 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 from Garrett into this new branch that's creating review, your name, and whatever that, that branch name was, and it's going to switch to that branch. So now you're kind of in a detached head state, and you're working in this, this branch. So we're going to make the same changes, the similar changes that we made before, but just increment the version number that we had. So using your code editor, you're going to open up that examples, or example, example.body.php file. Um, and make a change. So basically, if you had a version number of 0.0.1, .0 now we're going to just increment that and do 0.0.2. Or if you want to be really crazy, 0.0.3. .0 you know, maybe you just you love odds. So, git add is going to be needed um, on that file to add that back to your staging index and then you're going to commit the changes. But one of the things you want to keep in mind, since you're amending a change now, you're going to do the commit a little bit different than you did previously. So you do git add just as you did you know, in the earlier example, but now with git commit, you're going to do dash dash amend. And that's basically um, just letting git know that you're amending a change that you've already made you know, to provide a correction or some sort of modification. So now your editor of choice should open or whatever you have configured, and you can change that commit message in some meaningful way, um, or not at all. It should bring up the previous commit message that you had, and a few things that you want to verify that is it, are the change IDs, does it make sense for what you had? Are you actually amending um, the change that you already had? So something to note, um, don't use the dash M flag to specify the commit summary because this will override the previous summary and it's going to cause the commit hook to regenerate the change ID. Instead, um, you're going to want to use the editor so the commit summary uh, will keep that change ID intact. Because if you change that change ID, Garrett loses track, loses track, has no idea, you know, that these things are tied together and it just won't work well and you should get an error when trying to, to push that patch set to Garrett. <coughs> okay, I'm fine with that. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to do the git review dash r. And keep in mind the dash r is important here because it tells git review to not rebase your changes against master, uh, which could potentially clutter up the, the diffs between the, the various patch sets because the rebase that you did initially could be completely different than the rebase for the second one, and you're going to pull in all of these other dependencies that uh, weren't there initially. So it, if you see here in the screenshot, you know, we did the git add, we did the git commit amend, and we, we made you know, seven new insertions to one file. And we did git review dash r, and we have a link uh, we no longer, with the git review dash r, in this case, since we're amending a, a patch set, we don't get the link to the change set anymore. You can just bring up the old link that you had. So when we make this new change, you're going to see, you know, like an IR, this is an example of like an IRC notification, you know, the commit summary, uh, commit message that I had, and then the link, and then I made this change on master, and then the link to the Garrett web UI. So 
a couple things that you'll note, or a thing that you'll notice about this that's different than the last time is now we have patch set two. And that is what's expanded by default. Uh, but if you wanted to look back at patch set one, you could click to the left on that, that triangle and it would pull down and show you that patch set. One of the reasons you want to kind of keep that in mind is the, the web UI is not the greatest in Garrett, but it's, they're improving it you know, all the time. Um, but if someone made some inline comments to a pre previous patch set, the only way you're going to see those is by expanding that previous patch set and then clicking on those inline comments and to make sure that they're addressed. So even if you're not looking at your own changes and you're looking at someone else's and doing review, it's nice to know that because then you can go and see that they've addressed you know, all of the issues. Uh, one of the things I really wish they had working better was the ability to like diff against the different patch sets and see that everything made sense. Yeah. yeah. So as she just mentioned, uh, Tim Starling had worked on making that easier to do and creating a tool, and it's linked to from the Git workflow document, which is linked to on this page. So one of the kind of common pitfalls that you'll see uh, when you're doing these changes, if Git review complains about multiple commits and asks you, hey, is this really what you wanted to do? It's probably not. So you're going to want to say no in that case and then do a git fetch dash dash all um, and then a git remote update. So both commands do exactly the same thing. They fetch the objects from the remote repo set and they you just want to pick me. the command that's easiest for you to remember and then kind of forget about the other one. And what this is doing is just making sure that <clears throat> all of the changes that Patrick? Garrett's seen are matching up for you. But we, we have a problem with Wi-Fi right now. Okay. So I mean almost everybody, is everybody down? <laughs> so everybody's out of network right now. So we have to fix it before we continue. Well, actually. The remix. So actually the, the rest of what I'm going to cover isn't going to require internet access, so y you can just pay attention or zone out, like either one works. So as I was just saying, the Git review complains about multiple commits. You're going to want to do you know, a, a Git fetch, fetch dash dash all, and that's going to pull in those changes locally that Garrett has seen, and then after you do that, you should be able to do your Git review dash r, and it shouldn't complain to you anymore. So the last thing that we're going to talk about is just how, at the foundation, we review code. If you're having trouble with the Wi-Fi, just try reconnecting to the same network again, and it'll probably be fine. So the things we look for in the code review won't change, but the workflow is a little different than it was before the Git switch. So one of the nicest things uh, about Garrett and the switch to Git is that now we have a review before merge policy. So it's important for us to have this review before merge workflow for MediaWiki core and also for any of our you know, core um, cluster or extensions that we deploy. Because uh, it offers that, that, and we offer that option to anyone that are writing extensions if they want to have the same kind of workflow. Um, and the only kind of things that we don't have this workflow for are localization and internationalization commits, uh, which can be pushed without review because the low risk for anything. But the, the review before merge is really nice because it kind of gives us a gated you know, master or a gated trunk um, so that we know multiple eyeballs have been on this change before it's introduced and pushed out to everyone else. And it really gives us a chance to get things you know, really right. Like what I talked about earlier, we, you can have a change set with you know, 20 patch sets, you know, 30 patch sets, <laughs> whatever it takes to actually get that right and to make the, you know, consensus amongst, amongst your other developers that, hey, this change makes sense. This is a change I actually want to see you know, merged into master. Um, so one of the nice things about Garrett is that you know, anyone can, can review the code. So anyone can ask for a Garrett account. You easily get an account. And uh, anyone can comment on the commits and you know, signal their criticism or their approvals. And you know, anyone can give a non-binding plus one to any commit. So however, for you know, any of the 
Garrett projects that we have, only a small number of people have the ability to approve the, the code in Garrett and actually merge it into the repo. Um, so this kind of super approval is a plus two. So one thing to keep in mind is that uh, two plus ones, you know, non-binding, you know, approvals don't actually equal a plus two. The plus two is only for the Garrett project owners. And um, if you want to see what the Git Garrett project ownership policies are, you can, you know, look at the link there. So even within a Garrett project, you can also specify uh, particular branches that are only um, specific people can pull into. So, you know, you can have a current really well-defined and refined uh, workflow. So like we said, anyone can comment on code in Garrett. Um, so, you know, viewing commenting on code. So earlier I brought up the, the Garrett web UI, um, and you can see, you know, the various things there. So kind of the important things to look at are the, the reviewers. So let me bring... Yeah, that's scaled poorly. Um, okay, this is a little better. So if you can see where it says reviewer and it has me, and then there's the other columns for verified and code review. Um, so the reviewers that you'll typically see on things like the Jenkins bot, the continuous integration, and that's an auto reviewer that auto verifies everything that passes the, the Jenkins tests. So if it passes, you'll see a green check mark. If it fails, you'll see a red X. Um, and it changed that because it's gonna need that green check mark before anyone can merge it. And this is gonna auto verify these things, so nothing has to explicitly uh, be done to do that. And then you can see the ad reviewer, which, like, as we already mentioned, is going to manually ping someone and request uh, their review. And it will show up in their uh, Garrett stream. So when you first log into Garrett, um, you know, this, the list of changes that you see, it will add those to there. So, you know, people use that workflow, they can see things that they need to review, even if they've not checked their email or logged into IRC. And then one of the other important things here is the ability to do a side-by-side -side diff. So it's gonna open a diff in a new tab, and then you can double click on a line and comment on that line. So that's how we do the inline comments. And then you're gonna save, um, save those comments. And then if you click up to change, it's gonna go back to the change set UI. Like, as we've already mentioned, there's the, you know, abandon change, like panic button. Um, and so you'll see this if you actually wrote the diff. And it's just going to basically remove the diff from the merge queue. But it leaves it in Garrett for archival purposes. So anyone can go and see what you attempted to do. And if later you realize, hey, this wasn't this ridiculous thing that I thought it was, you can kind of revive that, uh, that change set. And then you'll see the review button. And you know, this is a page where you can leave kind of overall comment. You can view the inline comments uh, from the diff that are still in draft form and awaiting publication and kind of signal your thoughts on that commit. And you can also signal approval with a plus one and, disa and disapproval with a negative one. And these numbers are non-binding, so they won't cause merges or rejections. They basically just give you feedback. So there's, they really have no formal effect on code review, but they kind of just give an overall uh, pulse of how people are feeling about this commit. And then to publish your draft and line comments, plus the comments on the diff as a whole, you just click publish on that screen. So, the formally reviewing and merging or rejecting code. So if you're one of the Garrett project owners, you are also gonna see the abandon change button. Um, and on the review page, you'll see the plus two approve option and a negative two to, to veto a diff. And then a publish and submit button. And the publish, this is gonna actually publish your comments and merge the diff into the branch just in one step so you don't have to do those things separately. And then you'll also see a submit patch set one button which is the merge, and it's only useful if someone else has already given that plus two approval to the diff, but not merged it, which can sometimes be the case. Um, and so once you've actually merged something into the example you know, Garrett project, you'll see that the Git web uh, link to that. And if you merge a commit that references a bugzilla bug, 
you want to go back and mark that bug resolved and then reference this merge ID that you get here and to let people know that's done and so they can click and review that change. And that's it. That's all I really wanted to cover in the tutorial. It's kind of a basic workflow of get, you know, how, how you work with that, how you add files, and how you get those pushed off for review. So <clears throat> once you get comfortable with this process, you can uh, look at the more complex workflow document that's linked to from here that gives you example, you know, more advanced topics are covered in that, like gives you examples of cherry picking code between branches, um, how, you know, deployments occur, and the foundations cluster, you know, things like that. So does anyone have any questions? No? Maybe? We got 10 new committers. Great. Congratulations, and thank you, Patrick.